So in this video, I'm going to talk you through the code that makes the Wheezy clock tick. Um, so you may have seen already that we're using a board um, from a company called Particle. I'm using their slightly older board uh, that we got free from Maplins as part of our prize competition uh, called the Spark Core. They do have um, much newer boards, but they're all very, very similar. Um, and really what the board is, is I think underneath it all, it's an Arduino. You're certainly programming it in something very similar to Arduino, um, but it's got some great um, functionality. One, it has a Wi-Fi card built in. Um, and two, it's got a whole kind of cloud platform and API plugged into it. So when you get the device, the first thing you do is plug it into your computer and um, using a, an application, you program it to connect to your Wi-Fi interface. And from that point onwards, everything is actually done in an online IDE. This is actually the IDE here. Uh, you can see the, the text, if I zoom up a little bit. Um, and it's all just web-based. It looks, as I said, almost entirely uh, like every um, Arduino code I've ever written, um, but it has some great bits of functionality. So one, you can see the devices you've currently got connected. So if I click on this, I've got a device called a Sparky connected. Uh, and what that means is that because it's connected, I can change some code and flash it straight to it, pressing this button. It takes a few seconds, disconnects the Arduino, reconnects it, uh, and you're good to go. Um, so it's actually really helpful for that. It means you can do your code as you're going along. You don't necessarily even have to plug it into your computer. Mine happens to be plugged in at the moment, but there's no need to, unlike on an Arduino. So that's one quite nice function, but obviously it's not groundbreaking. I think the next bit probably is. So you'll see here, if you've ever seen any Arduino code before, um, this will be familiar to you most of it. Um, but in this setup function here, I'm able to do this particular function here. This is specific to the particle um, framework and it lets me publish a function to the particle framework and I've got a function um, that I want to call move clock and I'm referring it to a function in my code which is this one here called move clock and what that lets me then do is publish that out to the particle API and various things like webhooks if you know what those are but what we're actually going to use it to is to plug into um, the brilliant really easy to use framework called if this then that so if you've never seen If This Then That before, it's a, um, a website and an app where you can go along and you can like code your own simple robots, I guess. So the little automated things that can happen without you getting involved. So what I'm going to do is write some that um, I have the If This Then app, app running on my phone and one of the things it can do is track locations. So I'm going to write some code um, in If This Then That that when I enter or leave particular locations, it's going to send um, information straight to my particle function because particle have written a plugin for if this, then that. So it's really powerful. So let me talk you through the code. It's relatively simple. Uh, I've got a serial connection coming in just so I can debug any of it, um, but I'm not really using it at the moment. I'm attaching the servo library that's included. Um, it works just like any Arduino servo library to pin D0. Uh, and I'm setting um, a particular um, button which I'm using later on uh, which is a button on the um, spark fun uh, the spark core sorry which is on D1 uh, I'm setting that initially to pull down so that's the setup um, and then there is a loop down the bottom which I'll come to in a moment um, but otherwise it waits until um, an external um, system in this case if this then that calls the move servo uh, function and what it does is it passes into that a string as a command and then all i look for is different commands so if the command is one i know that's home and i move the servo to a particular location that will move the hand on the clock round if it's two it moves to a particular location so it's two it's works and most of the location based ones are pretty simple um, i do have some slightly more um, interesting ones so I've got one here um, for meeting, um, if I move this code around a bit. So if with if this then that, I can read my Outlook meeting requests. So I'm going to get it to move the servo to meeting on the clock face. But then I'm going to get it to wait for 15 minutes and then move to the previous location. If you look right at the top, in my move clock command, which is what gets called by the function, the first thing I do is add the command or I pass the command into this add previous moves function and then I call the move servos. So add previous moves is down here and all it's really doing is storing the last 10 previous moves in an array 
with the newest move at position zero. Um, so some slightly more complicated code in here you can see where I have to copy between arrays to change them. Um, but effectively that's all that bit of code does. So when I have a meeting it waits for 15 minutes in milliseconds and then it moves the calls move servo again which is the function we're in um, with the previous move. So it would go back to wherever it was. So if it was on work and I had a meeting, it moved to meeting, 15 minutes moved back to work. If I was in London or traveling, uh, it would do all those things. It's quite cool. Uh, and I'm gonna do a similar kind of thing here for tweeting. So uh, again, we can plug if this, then that into my Twitter account. And when we publish on the MicroMonsters Twitter account, uh, which if you haven't followed yet is MicroMonsters UK, um, it will call this one, move to Twitter, wait for a minute and then it will move back to the previous location. So that's what it is. I've, I've uncommented various bits of code and moved it around. So all I'd need to do to add that straight to my um, clock is just to press this flash button and it takes about a minute. Oh, I've broken something. Uh, I have to convert those to a string because the previous moves. Uh, I think that's the code for string, but could be wrong. No, it's string like that. So I haven't actually tested out uh, these meetings and tweetings ones yet, as you can see, otherwise that would have compiled. That seems to be going. And that will write to it. You can see it says flashing code in this bit at the bottom and flash successful, your device is being updated. So I'll leave that alone for a minute and I'll go and show you how the if this then that works. So what I'll do is I'll start a new applet to show you how to plug this together. So we click new applet and what we want to do, you can see it's really simple, it's like a recipe. So if this, I'm gonna choose what this is, then that, I'm gonna choose what that is after we've chosen this. So if this, and I'm gonna search for location. There are tons and tons of services from all different kinds of providers. You can see there's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's Tumblr, there's Evernote, tons of different stuff. So I'm just gonna search for location again. So location is a service particularly offered by if this, then that, that, and you have to install the app on your phone to get this to work. But you can see I can choose from when I enter an area, when I exit an area, or when I do both. So I'm gonna start with uh, entering an area. Um, so this isn't my home, it's just randomly selected somewhere relatively near me. Let's do um, Big Ben. That's where I'm going to decide my home is. <laughs> As you create a new area, you can zoom in and out and select the kind of size of that area if you don't want to be quite so precise. But we probably do want to be relatively precise. Uh, where do we go? There we are. Um, so if I enter anywhere within that area, it will call this or call whatever we want. So if I enter the area, then do something. So in here, we search for Particle, which is the company who make the board. And then I can call a function. And because I've logged into my Particle account already using this, it already knows about um, my device and my method. So my method was called Move Clock, if you remember back here. Move Clock, that's what we're publishing. Uh, so call Move Clock, and I can pass in all kinds of information. So you can actually pass in um, particular bits of kind of code from whatever if this bit you put in. So because our if this was location, what we can use is the time it occurred at and a URL for the location. I don't really want those because if you remember in the code, all it's looking for is a number. So because this is home, I want to pass in the number one. So I'm just gonna clear all that out, put one in and do create action. And that's it, it's now on. It will now call that function. So I've just done the same for all my things on the um, clock. Uh, and then for the meeting and the tweeting, I've done kind of similar things. And if you go and look around if this and that, they're all as simple as I've just shown you there. And that really is the code. Now it's taken me seven years to build a Weasley clock, mostly because I really didn't want to write an iOS app specifically for this. Uh, I can write iOS apps, not my everyday job, but I've done it a few times. I just didn't really want to. I could never be bothered to get around to it. And once I found that if this, then that could just do it with a really small bit of code. I mean, it took me a couple of hours to write. Uh, it was just much, much easier. Um, so I'm hoping you can use if this, then that on all kinds of different applications. 
But that's what we did for the Weezy clock. That's how the code works. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and found it interesting. Don't forget to subscribe and check back soon for the final part of this build where we'll put all of our hardware together, test it out and demo it. That's all for now. Bye.